Back returning now to our top story. Rockets have been fired from Gaza towards the Israeli city of Ashkelon after a Hamas deadline expired. Israeli Iron Dome rockets were launched to intercept the incoming barrage, but some of them got through. Israel has responded with airstrikes on Gaza, flattening neighbourhoods. For more analysis on the situation, joining us live now is Senior Lecturer in Peace and Conflict Studies of the, at the University of Sydney, Dr A.L. Mayroz. appreciate your time. Thank you. I see in a piece that you've had published that you discuss the false sense of security held by Israeli citizens about the likelihood of this sort of brutal attack by Hamas. How would you characterise Israel's response thus far? Well, Israel uh, or the Israeli government is facing uh, very difficult decisions. Uh, the uh, Israeli public has suffered a huge trauma uh, following the inhumane acts that uh, we've all uh, witnessed in the last few days and is now pushing very hard for solutions and for restoring the military deterrence that Israel seemed to have lost. Uh, at the same time, there's a lot of other competing challenges. For example, the over 100 uh, hostages held in Gaza that are uh, both facing a, a threat of, of uh, executions, but even of getting hurt as a human shield uh, from the bombing. And so uh, the Israeli government is, is in, in a bind. Uh, going uh, uh, into a ground assault will certainly uh, raise the number of casualties, both among the Israeli uh, uh, forces and certainly among the uh, people of Gaza that have been always suffering the most. And uh, at the same time, uh, aerial bombing uh, don't uh, do much uh, beyond uh, inflicting uh, suffering and casualties because obviously the Hamas is uh, well hidden underground. Uh, and so uh, what to do? This is a difficult decision for Israel. And for Hamas, I mean, Hamas made a deliberate calculation here, didn't they? They knew the sort of retaliation that would be on the cards from Israel after their attack, but went ahead anyway. What do we read from that about the strategy we're seeing from Hamas? Well, that was the main reason for the surprise, because the calculations by everyone else other than the Hamas was that because of Israel's uh, likely or assured retaliation, uh, Hamas wouldn't do something like that. Uh, this has not been the uh, the way things have gone in the last uh, you know years except for certain rounds of violence but uh, i think what is taking place is a combination of many factors the uh, sense of hopelessness among the palestinian population both in gaza and in in uh, the west bank has, has grown they they see to, uh, no chances of any meaningful advancement towards the palestinian state the Arab nations uh, have kind of uh, left them to their own. Uh, the uh, Gaza, uh, the uh, West Bank is heating up. And so add to that the uh, desire and the high priority they place on abducting Israelis uh, for a prisoner exchange. Uh, the head of the uh, Hamas in Gaza has spent 22 years in an Israeli jail and was exchanged in return for as one of 1,000 uh, Hamas operatives in, in return for one Israeli soldier in 2011. So they they hold that as a very high priority. But also there are some indications that uh, Iran may have had at least played some part, either in confirming the attack or in even helping the planning. And they would get mixed messages about whether that was indeed the case. And obviously, the negotiations, the still ongoing negotiations between uh, the US and Saudi Arabia, which include a normalization pact between uh, Israel and, and Saudi Arabia, would have hurt uh, Iranian interests, and, and the attack uh, would have certainly uh, uh, helped thwart, thwart that, those negotiations. So beyond Iran, how much support does Hamas have in the region and how likely is it that the war will now escalate on, on other fronts? Well, that's a, that's a big question. Unfortunately for the Palestinian people, the two main factions, which are Fatah and Hamas, are not very popular uh, for, for different reasons. Uh, but uh, the Palestinians have gotten to the stage where they are so, they, as I said, they've lost so much hope that uh, and and are so uh, despondent that 
even something as inhumane as the attacks we've seen are gaining or increasing the support for Hamas among the po Palestinian population, which is uh, counter to really any, any uh, hope of uh, advancing uh, a Palestinian state because the trust that was, the little trust, however little it was, of the Israeli people in any kind of a, of a two-state solution has now diminished uh, very much because having a Palestinian state next to uh, Tel Aviv and the center of Israel only a few kilometers rather than dozens of kilometers as it is, as it is now would be very hard sell uh, for Israelis uh, after the attack. Dr. Eyal Maraz, really appreciate you joining us, your analysis. Thanks so much for making the time.